Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now initially this is going to be a tutorial for Affinity Photo but at the end of this video I will show you how to do the same sort of process in other products like Craft Artist, Affinity Design, Photo Plus, Page Plus, Web Plus all these programs can do the same thing just in various different ways and I would also imagine that Draw Plus has the same options but I don't have that program so I can't confirm that but I would assume that it does right so what I've done is I've opened up a background that I made for myself but you can use whichever pro um, background that you want or no background at all that is up to you and the object of this tutorial is to sh show that how adding a drop shadow can add to the illusion of the perspective of how f close things are or how far away things are. So we need an object to go onto this background and for this I'm just using this PNG image that I have of this brooch of a zebra. So I'm just going to select all, edit, copy, come back to my background and then paste. And I'll just use the move tool to sort of place it roughly in the middle. Right, so now I want to add some drop shadow to this and to do that I can come to the effects tab which is next to the layers tab over here as long as this is the layer that is highlighted and the one we're working on and here we have like in affinity products they call it outer shadow in other products it's called like drop shadow so you just click put a tick into outer shadow and then the options below will open up so I'm going to leave the opacity on 50% I'm going to move the radius up to 50% it's probably easier to type this in rather than try and use the scales and the offset I'm going to make at 50% as well do that 50 percent okay and I'm going to leave the angle at 315 which is the angle in which this drops down so as you can see if I just come off of the move tool a second you can now see the drop shadow outside the horse image here giving the image that it is above the background because it's being able to cast a shadow so what we need now is another copy of this horse. So if I go back to the layers panel, and that is still highlighted, I'll come back to the move tool. If I hold down the alt key and just click and drag, it will make another copy of that layer. Now what I want to do is I want to make this bigger and but to keep it in the proportions the same I'm going to hold down the con control key put the cursor over the corner I want to move hold down the control key and resize it make it quite a bit bigger let's move it back onto the page I'll come off the move tour a second and as you can see it's still got the it's copied the whole layer and the effects over but because it's got the same effects the shadow is set at the same distance so we need to alter that so if I come over to this layer of effects and double click on the IFX Logan or EFX Logan logo a new panel opens up and this is where we're going to make this look like it is further away it's nearer to the viewer but further away from the background so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave the opacity at 
I'm going to change the radius to 75 and the offset I'm going to make 100 so it's probably easy to just slide down to 100 I'm going to leave the angle the same so I can just close that so hope you can see that that shadow is now a bit further away from the horse and uh, I could have made it probably a tad lighter I'll just go back into that um, let's just alter the opacity slightly oh, let's go to about 33 percent so it does have a shadow but because it's further away from the background it is not as dark if I highlight this other layer here come to the move tool again hold down the alt key and move this up to there now come to the corner I want to alter hold down the control key and reduce it in size let's just put that about there so again I'm going to click on the FX icon and because it is a copy of that layer there it still has that layer's settings so this time I'm going to make the radius 25 the offset I'm going to make 35 and the opacity I'm going to go up to about 65, 66 something like that there you go and now I'll just close that come off the move tool so hopefully that now looks like yeah, because that horse is, looks further away and is nearer the background the shadow is darker and then the middle one shadows a bit lighter and the last one is lighter still so hopefully that gives the perspective that these are in different distances from the viewer although technically they're not they're just various layers on the background so that is basically really the end of this look at how to use this particular effect um, but like I did say I will now have a look at some of the other products that Serif make or have made to see how that they do it so let me just go away and I will come back and I'll be back in a second hang on okay let's move on to affinity designer which works in basically the same way as affinity photo so I've opened up the background I've opened up the, and I've copied and pasted in this picture of the horse so again you you can even go from the effects tab which is next to it next to the layers thing or you can sort of access it from the effects logo uh, icon that is down there and do it that way so let's just go to the effects tab it's probably the easiest one put in outer shadow and then it just this works pretty much the same way as affinity photo did so you can do it like that so moving on to the next product we will go with photo plus again I've already set this up and um, with this one there's no sort of effects tab readily on the default option but down here in the layers the display area you got the FX button that will open up the drop shadow option you just put a tick in drop shadow and then you can add the intensity and change the angle in pretty much the same way as you could in affinity it's probably not as easy to get the settings just right but 
it is doable. I think part of the problem is that I've got so many programs open, my computer's sort of slightly slowing down. Um, but you get the idea, you can just put a tick in the drop shadow and make your alterations. And then you have your drop shadow. Right, moving on to page plus. Again, I've opened up the background and the image of the horse. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. First of all, let's highlight the actual image that we want to add the alterations to. Now, there is an effect, especially in Page Plus X9, down the right here, there's a couple of tabs just hanging off the side here, and one of those is the Effects tab. If you just leave your cursor over it, it will pop out. And then you can come down to, here we go, drop shadow. Put, um, just click into that box there, and it will add the drop shadow for however it's set. And again, you can alter the intensity blur and what have you. But let me just take that off for a second. Not going to let me. Here we go. And let that effects panel go away. Over here on the left, let me just get rid of that. Oh, come on. Oh dear, sorry about that. I got distracted about which bit does what. I'm trying to remember what to do in different programs is confusing. Um, over here on the left, one of the options is Shadow Tool. You click on that, it will put in this weird looking icon thing here. And you can click on and drag out the shadow from there and this one here this is the opacity slider and this is the distance slider and the one in the middle is I think the blur so you can alter various things using this tool which is probably probably better if you want to be more artistic for want of a better phrase but the I've accidentally shut that down but the effects tab that was up there it's probably the best place to start if you are just trying this out right moving on to web plus right this is um probably the least forgiving as far as making effects of all the serif products um, because there is no like FX icon but you can use the styles tab click on that and then one of the options from this drop down menu is shadows and then you can add drop shadows like that, but you don't seem to have any way of really editing that option. Um, it's been a while since I've really tinkered with Web Plus like this. Um, maybe it is in there somewhere, but on my quick look that I've just done, I couldn't find a way of editing. Oh, hang on, edit actions. No, it doesn't seem to. No. Like I said, it's probably the least forgiving of the all the serif products. Right, so we've done that. So let's have a look at Craft Artist. Again, one of the options you have with Craft Artist is one of the tabs here is Effects. Um, but unfortunately, 
Night Shadows is not one of the options that you can use. But down here, just sort of hidden, almost hidden, is the FX icon. And if you click on that, it opens up the filter effects where again you've got the drop shadow. Hang on, I don't know quite why it blurred that, but let's try that again. There we go, drop shadow. And then you can add the intensity, the angle, and the distance. And alter the settings however you see fit. So basically that is a look at how to add drop shadows in Affinity Photo, Affinity Design, Craft Artist, Photo Plus, Page Plus and Web Plus. And like I said previously I'm sure that Draw Plus probably has the some of these options or exactly the same options probably you know there probably has an effects button or it has a tab where you can access the effects that way so hopefully this will help you in whichever products you have into adding drop shadows thank you very much for watching and goodbye